Hello there, my name is Dr Amir Seferdin and beside me is Lucia McGee. Um, I'm a gastroenterology registrar in Kent and Lucia is a medical SHO in Bath and we won the clinical audit prize last year for a project entitled Chase CRP Review Patient, Improving the Quality of Out-of-Hours Medical Handover at a London Teaching Hospital. We're going to talk a little bit about our project and then more importantly talk about the things we learnt from our project, why it works so well and then what we've done next that applied the things we learnt uh, to other projects. So this is our poster from last year. The reason why we did the project was that um, when we first started at Charing Cross Hospital a couple of years ago, it was quite clear early on that handover of medical patients to be reviewed at the weekend was very inefficient and there was a possibility that it could lead to patient safety incidents. Um, and this was echoed by reports, anecdotal reports from other junior doctors as well. Um, so we looked at the Royal College of Physicians guidelines about handover and they state very clearly that it's a major preventable cause of harm. Um, and so we decided that it was very apt to try and improve handover at our hospital. So our main aims were to audit the current handover practice for weekend patients at Charing Cross Hospital against the very well-defined Royal College of Physicians guidelines and then to create interventions to um, improve this process in the future. So um, the... What we what there was a handover pro forma started about three years before we joined, and that was in place when we started at the trust um, a couple of years ago. And um, as you can see, it's a sort of blank piece of paper with some spaces in to write certain bits of information. But what we were finding was that often a handover for a weekend would include a patient name and then just simply something like Chase CRP or review patient without any other clinical context. So it was very difficult at the weekend to prioritise which patient should be seen urgently and which should wait a bit longer. Um, we therefore decided to audit this more formally against these RCP guidelines um, and this was over a period of seven weeks totaling 82 patients and we looked at the various parameters and as you can see from the graph there were several parameters that weren't documented very clearly on the handover sheets including DNR status and past medical history or background which shows that the context of the handover was not very useful for the um, weekend doctors. We also noted anecdotally from medical registrars and IT registrars that when they had to go and see unwell patients for medical emergencies over the weekend, it was very difficult for them to access up-to-date information from the notes, and they might often be going through reams of notes trying to find ceilings of care and up-to-date problem lists, and this was affecting their ability to manage the patient effectively. Um, and so we audited Friday ward round entries um, over two Fridays for all the medical patients in the hospital. And as you can see, um, only 7% of patients had ceiling of care documented on that Friday ward round and only half had a up-to-date problem list documented. We therefore set about trying to intervene to improve these. So this is the old performer that was being used and which we audited initially and as you can see it's got quite a lot of um, blank um, white spaces for the information to be put in. This is the new performer which we made based on the RCP guidance and which um, has some additional parameters in which we felt were important to be included, including who the job should be allocated to and how unwell the patient was. And that was particularly important when it came to prioritising the patients to be seen first on a weekend. So now I'm just going to talk through our post-intervention data. So above, we can see um, that the, the information for the handover sheets, um, we show that the parameters that were previously being poorly documented are, have come up and nearly all of the poorly documented ones reached over 50% compliance after our intervention. Unfortunately, the Friday ward round sheets which we introduced, we found that of the 88 which sets of notes that we looked at, only 10% of those were using the Friday ward round performer. And the juniors that we spoke to told us that there were reasons such as time constraints as well as um, poor kind of background knowledge of the patients for them to really be able to fill in those sheets adequately. What we did find was that those patients who did have the Friday ward round sheet in the notes, there was good documentation of all of the parameters that we wanted. So, um, one of the things we learned from this project 
the most important thing we learned was that senior input can help direct change. So our supervisor, consultant supervisor, knew we were doing the project, but didn't really have much direct input. So this was fine because we managed to lead the project ourselves and collect all the data ourselves and analyze it. But it became more tricky when we were trying to convince other people, including other consultants and other doctors, that this was a serious issue that needed to be changed. Um, and so in the future, we would have hoped to have to get seniors involved more early so they can try and push forward the changes we have found out need to be made for patient safety reasons. Another thing we did do quite well, I think, was that we got junior doctors involved very early on, the stakeholders who would be benefiting from the improved efficiency of our changes. Um, we used to go around the wards and talk to junior doctors individually and explain why we're doing this project and the outcomes we had had so far. And it also meant, because they were aware of what our plan was, that we could trial certain things like the ward run performer and the um, handover performer um, with certain wards first before rolling it out over to other wards. And so it was important to get these juniors involved early on. The other thing is that serial measurements would be very useful. So during our year that we had ran this project over, we managed to complete the loop once, and there wasn't any time to complete it to do further loops. Um, but for other projects, I think we would probably try to ensure that there was continuity of the project over subsequent years so we could ensure that the care was um, persisting and the quality of care was persisting throughout um, subsequent years. So I think there were three aspects of our project that helped it to work really well. The first was the team that we were working in. So um, it was a team that involved an F1 and F2, um, as well as a CT1. So we had all different backgrounds within our team, which was really helpful for um, thinking about perspectives. We also all took on e an equal workload with the project as well. The topic that we picked, we picked a topic that we cared about, and we also picked a topic that we felt we could make a tangible difference to. Um, and that really helped us with regards to motivation for getting this project done. The other aspect was timing. So we started our project at the beginning of a year um, in August, and we continued it all the way through until the following July. And that length of time allowed the project to have good continuity. It meant that we completed a full audit cycle, and it meant that we had a good volume of data um, which we could look at over the course of the year. So what we did next, as you can see, we had very different um, places where we did our next projects. So I worked at Northwick Park in London and Lucia went to New Zealand. Um, and at Northwick Park, I realised during some night shifts as an SHO that the handover between nurses and doctors overnight was very poor and they often wouldn't know the patients well enough to give us any context about how to prioritise them. And so I mentioned this to one of the consultants um, after these night shifts and he told me that this had been an issue that was noted before and that actually there were other people doing handover projects focusing on different parts of handover. Um, in the hospital as well. And so we joined forces with them and they were doing things like trying to improve the doctor-to-doctor -doctor handover of acute medical patients at night and in the morning. So we created a handover group that was led by two or three senior consultants, um, which is very useful, which meant we got lots of um, data from the project. And it also meant it was much easier to push forward the changes to managers and to senior nurses, other consultants and other doctors um, when we had the results. And so there'll be a clear rationale and support for our changes. So I worked um, in New Zealand in the South Island and I think the thing that I really learned from our project was that if you want to do something and if you want to be proactive you can actually really make a change. So I also started a project on handover at the hospital that I was working at. And every project obviously has to be tailored to the environment and to the hospital. And for this project, I focused on an electronic handover system, which we hope to be rolling out in the next month. So I wonder how many of us have ever felt frustrated by the systems that we face every day. I know that working in the NHS can be extremely frustrating sometimes. Our message today is try something new and ultimately anything which you do, any project that you undertake which can improve patient safety or the efficiency of doctor's time will be beneficial. Good luck with your projects.